Tyreek Hill made a pretty bold statement today. He made two statements, and I'll kind of break down each one. So first and foremost, if you've seen from the title, he is predicting a pretty... At first glance, it does, seem, it does seem pretty crazy, but what I'm going to show you in the last few years for a top leading receiver, it definitely is plausible for what he is he's saying, especially his first year with Miami. So you see here, it's a star, uh, Dolphin star wide receiver. Tyree Kill is determined to make NFL history in 2023 while appearing on the In Need to Be Sad podcast. Miami superstar receiver shared his lofty goal of becoming the first wideout in the league in history to eclipse its elusive 2000 re receiving mark. Now, again, at first glance, it doesn't, it sounds crazy, but looking at the list from uh, the last year down to 2015, just getting a decent sample size. It looks like it's trending, it's trending into that direction. So if we kind of start from 2015, that was Julio Jones. He had over 1,800 receiving yards. 2016, it was T.Y. Hone. He had four, over 1,400. 2017 was A.B. over 1,500. 2018 was Julio again over 1,600. And this is where the numbers start to really uh, taper up. 2019 was Michael Thomas at over 1,700. 2020 was Stefan Diggs at over 1,500. And keep especially these two for 21 and 22. Cooper Cup had 1,947 yards, and last year, J uh, Justin Jefferson led the league with 1,809 yards. So especially the last two years and the way the NFL is going with a air raid offense, a pass-heavy offense, it is definitely possible that sooner rather than later, we will we will get a 2,000-yard receiver. And if that happens, I don't care who else had an amazing season, I think that that sub receiver needs to win MVP. If Tyree Kill entering the 2023 season has over 2,000 receiving yards, he should know that win the MVP because that is historic. That should be immensely praised. Similar to, I'll throw out there with Derrick Henry in 2020 when he when he ran for over 2,000 rushing yards. I think he should have won MVP for that because that is something that is difficult, especially for running backs now in this day and age. He should have got it. And I view the same way for why for a wide receiver if if Tyreek Hill or any receiver eclipses 2000 rece receiving yards he should automatically win MVP and that and that will be earth shattering because many great receivers have come through this league Jerry Rice TO Moss Calvin Johnson Larry Fitzgerald and the list goes on and on AB it goes on and none of them have ever come close to winning a MVP Tyreek Hill isn't that far off of what he's saying over 2,000 receiving yards because especially the last two years is really tapering up to that. Especially in 2021, it looked like Cooper Cup was about to do that. Fell just short. And also with Justin Jefferson, not that far off from what he was doing. But also look at for Tyreek Hill's stats. His first year in Miami, he had a career high in receptions, 119 receiving yards. A reception, sorry. And then receiving yards hit over just over 1,700. So his benchmark, the first season in Miami, is outstanding. Over 1,700 receiving yards. And it's crazy to think that he wasn't the, lead, the league leader in receiving. That was Justin Jefferson with a little over 100 yards more. But he's de it's, definitely pl it's definitely plausible. And especially you look at the offense around him with the pieces, which I will get into in a second with the other claim that he said. Certainly. To... Uh, now, the big question mark, too, once again, getting down the line, is the question mark with two with his health, and we will get into that in a second. But to kind of quickly wrap, wrap up the first part of it of him saying the 2,000-yard uh, mark, which is definitely a huge, a lofty guarantee that he said, uh, or goal he's setting, that is definitely lofty, no doubt. It's not impossible because of the last two seasons of the league leading receiver and the way the NFL is going. So no doubt Tyreek Hill has a capability, especially just how the, the speed, the elusiveness, how easy he can make defenders miss. No doubt he is definitely on the top charts of if I had to pick a receiver to do that, no doubt that is him. I think it would probably be between him and Justin Jefferson. Cooper Cup, I don't see Cooper Cup ever coming back close to what he set in 2021. He had a, a historic triple crown performance that year. But I, I don't want to call him just a one-hit wonder because he is a great receiver, but I don't I don't see him coming close to that. I'd be really shocked if he does. If I had to bet money on a 2,000-yard receiver, it is probably between Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill. Now, getting to 
the other claim that he made on top of the 2000 receiving mark was, and I thought this article was going to talk about it, it doesn't really talk about it too much, it just talks about the 2000 receiving yard list, is the guarantee also that the Miami Dolphins will be the 2023 Super Bowl champs. This one I am not too sure about, but I want to give you the roster. It is a, they do have a, a good chance, just like anyone else in the AFC. Of course, they have a gauntlet to go through as opposed to NFC, which is a much easier walk to get to the Super Bowl. The AFC is definitely challenging. Not even just talking about the conference, the division itself, the Bills, Jets, and Dol- and Patriots, which is, we'll see what the Patriots do, but they will give teams some challenge. I, I think so far, I kind of had the Patriots going 0-6 in the division because on paper, I just don't like them, but I did also admit that I could see them stealing one or two games, which is definitely plausible, but it is definitely a challenging division and on top of that, a challenging conference. But looking at the pieces that he has, of course, first and foremost, you have Tua at the starting quarterback position. He has shown to really take a step forward in his third season, did a, had an amazing job, uh, just really leading the team leading the team it was unfortunate that he had the injury concerns which is one of the one of my concerns is for them to reach the super bowl was out for a few games because of concussions that definitely hurt the team but when he was in and also too when uh late in the season he did struggle when he was playing but overall he had a huge step up uh you know step right in the right direction for his future with miami I think he really showed that he is capable of being a, a franchise quarterback for this team and also put on weight, which is, you know, got for him, good for him. And also uh, changing his helmet up to help reduce concussions. But more importantly, he is getting the size and making it a little bit harder for him to get pushed around. But also we look at the, the rest of the team for offense. And these I'm not going to name everybody, but these are just big names or just interesting names that I pointed out. So look at for running backs, we have... A Kane, this is the, the third the third round pick they had in from Texas A&M. Definitely a uh, fast running back, you know, uh, home run hitter. It's gonna be interesting how he he uh, folds, it, you know, kind of works into with the rotation because also you have Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson Jr., and you also have Miles Gaskins. I think people probably have forgotten. Uh, definitely this year didn't really do too much. It was mostly Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr. So it's gonna be interesting how those four running back sets work out in the during the season who knows I, if i had to pick it no doubt gaskins is the odd man out and there's a good chance he might get cut who knows but even that if you if you get rid of gaskins just uh aka moser and jeff Wilson jr it's gonna be interesting how he they work how they kind of work out who's gonna be the lead back of course it's gonna be a committee but I, i'd be interested to see who the number one the old label is and also looking at more important the Kind of the flashy position is the wide receiver and tight end. So, of course, we just talked about Tyree Kill, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I pair him up with Jalen Waddell. And I did throw in Chosen Anderson. Definitely, uh, the last few seasons, he has been a disappointment. It hasn't been that good or average at best. But I think he can definitely thrive with Hill and Waddell at one and two. I, I remember they, they showed a stat with uh, the speed. I think he has 4 2 speed, 4 2, 4 3 speed which is definitely great for a wide receiver three. I think he can definitely flourish in this offense, like I said, with defense having to worry but more worry about Tyree Kill and Gina Waddle. Chosen Anderson can definitely have the opportunity to, to excel in this system. And also, too, another one is Braxton Berrios. I don't know how big of a role he is, but definitely a good uh, depth wide receiver they have. I thought that was also a solid signing, which I think he can also make some good plays here and there. I wanted to throw his name in there too. I thought it was an interesting one as well. Titan, I don't know who's going to be the, the starter. Uh, of course, I'm not a Miami fan, so I'm not plugged into the ins and outs of who, what's going on with the battle. One thing I did write down was uh, uh, Elijah Higgins is the the tight end that they drafted. I think he was. I think he was. If I'm not mistaken, he was labeled a wide receiver in the draft, and I think they moved him to tight end. If I have that right, but I kind of wrote his name down for tight end because I didn't know if he was going to be the number one tight end. That's only a name I really am familiar with. Of course, with him being a rookie, because like I said, I don't know who's going to be the starting tight end with Kasaki being gone and going to my uh, to the Patriots. So I kind of labeled Elijah Higgins as their number one tight end in that, but I could be wrong. And also looking at the defense, they have more of a capable defense to really hold their own and go, go head to head with anybody. Christian Wilkins, uh, Bradley Chubb, the big trade they made 
during the trade deadline. You also have Jaden Phillips, who also is a good linebacker. And look at the secondary. You have Xavier Howard, the rookie they drafted, Cam Smith, which I was surprised that he went there. I thought there was other needs they, they had, but I can somewhat understand because of someone else we're going to name on here too is the bigger name, Jalen Ramsey, the trade they made, which really shocked me. I did not think Miami was going to get Jalen Ramsey. And that's also why I kind of figured they get, I guess you can, I can understand why they got Cam Smith. It's just because of very soon the money and also age wise with some of them. And also too with Xavier Howard that they eventually want to move off of them soon. So you kind of want to develop Cam Smith to be one of the starters, especially for Ramsey. I just don't know how much, how long he has with the Miami Dolphins just because of again age and more importantly, the cap issue, how it's going to fit in. But for right now, they're all in. Uh, it's, a, it's a win now mentality as it should. And when I look at this, it is a definitely a great roster, especially defense too. Uh, very, I think, uh, underrated as well. Definitely step, can step up and make plays, uh, especially you know watching the Bills go against them. They, we definitely had a, a challenging time, and they they held their own. To give them credit, they 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 really excelled. I know towards the end they kind of started to fall apart a little bit. Just were able to barely squeak into the playoffs, and it's unfortunate that Tua wasn't there to play and Skylar Thompson was the starting quarterback for that if you're looking at it from a Dolphins perspective. But for my predictions for this year, I have them going eleven and six, which is still pretty good. Uh that will but I did have the Bills having slightly a better record, so that would make the Dolphins a wild card team. But no doubt, regardless if they are home field advantage for in you know a top four seed or in the wild card, there is a there is a possibility that they could go all the way. They have the team that's built to go to ha- go head to head with anybody, especially with Kansas City, which is the number one team, not in the AFC, but just in the NFL in general. They have the capability, they have the team, especially offensively, to go back and forth. Uh, also with defense, again, similar built to to the Chiefs. It's it's good enough to hold your own, to get maybe one or two stops or potentially a um, you know, a great turnover to really turn the tides in the game and seal the and seal the, the win. They have once again. It's, they they have the pieces more enough pieces to go and win the Super Bowl. I don't think it's a stretch for Tyree Kill to say that, but I want it's. I think it's even a bigger stretch to say Super Bowl as opposed to two thousand receiving yards because I think it's more plausible of the two thousand receiving yards as it is maybe I think for the for the Super Bowl. And it might sound crazy, but I just think that my two biggest concerns is just offensive line. I don't think they addressed it enough. It's not horrible, but I don't think it's where it needs to be. And also, especially with Tua, like I said, he has done improvements. Give him credit for that. He is, of course, changed his helmet to help reduce concussions. But more importantly, he he has put on some size at the uh, the position, which is definitely makes it easier. Not going to be able to, you know, obviously be less fragile and less make it harder for defenders to kind of push him around a little. So give him credit for that. He has been bulked up. He has taken it seriously, especially when we thought it was me career ending with the multiple concussions. So it's definitely gonna be interesting. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of switch that and make it a little bit even for both the 2,000 receiving yards and the Super Bowl possibility because both are definitely a possibility with Tyreek Hill being run with his team. No doubt he will get the most looks, and especially with having this with supporting cast around him, there's a good chance he can go for 2,000. And then also looking at the Super Bowl path, it they definitely have a chance. But once again, you have just off the top of my head, you have the Bengals, Chiefs, Bills, Jets. Ravens, uh, Jaguars, I, I will throw in there. Other ones, not maybe Super Bowl caliber, but playoff caliber, no doubt, is Steelers, Browns. Um, trying to think. I, 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 want to, I want to say, I guess, Dark Horse, maybe the Patriots, but I don't want to put too much stock into that. No doubt you have Raiders, Broncos, Chargers, uh, d- plenty of teams that could definitely go and compete for that. Of course, for the ASC South, someone has to come out of that, which obviously would, would be the, the Jags. But also, too, I think a, a very surprising team that maybe I don't think people are talking about too much is the Texans. Not to say they're going to make the playoffs, but I definitely think they're going to shock some people and be a lot better than what people are projecting them to be. So I, I, I would look at, you know, watch out for that team as maybe a, a shocker, as a dark horse potentially of getting in. I doubt it. But regardless, again, Chiefs, Bengals, Bills, Jags, uh, Ravens, Chargers, and so forth. It is a huge list, but once again, they have a team that's more incapable of doing it. 
Once again, my biggest concerns is just offensive line and Tua. That's especially just you, you know, circle, highlight, underline, whatever is just Tua. If he can stay healthy, no doubt. But the obvious thing is, if he's hurt, it's going to ruin the team, and then also it's going to be a big questions of just his future. I know he signed a one year extension after this year, but if he if he keeps getting banged up this upcoming season, it's definitely going to derail the season, obviously, just like any other position I, I, or any other team uh, that would happen to. But that's my thoughts on it. Definitely, it's not out of the realm for both of them, but I do. it's definitely going to be challenging for both. But again, not impossible, especially for the 2,000 receiving yards, because I think if not this year, we will see that soon eventually. Just the way the NFL is going, especially the last two years, is definitely is possible. And also, once again, for the Super Bowl, they have a fighting chance just like anyone else. So with that being said, let me know your thoughts down below on Tyreek Hill's uh, bold statements with his receiving yards and also the Super Bowl champ, the, the pro uh, projection to be Super Bowl champs this year. Let me know your thoughts down below if you agree with that or not. And uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.